You know what that is? Something we don't eat in the U.S. Are we there yet? But I wanted to introduce you a few of my friends here. Mister, Mister, your bike problem. The wind it it blown your bike over. What's he doing? You can go down here, okay. Hello, is this the uh, the Hotel Livikin by the Sea? This one, the blue one, yeah. This one in here? Yeah, yeah. Where do you park? Uh, near to the... Uh, there. Yeah? They'll just put it there for the moment and they will tell you where the parking for the hotel is. Okay. Yeah. I can't stay here for a minute? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, just sitting down here having a little, uh, yeah, it's like lunch juice. Double cappuccino. Thank you. It's a lovely morning, um, but you know, when they set up my table, they gave me this mat and they brought me two paper bags. Let's see, let's look inside this one. Oh, there's some bread in there. And then let's look inside this one. Oh, I got some utensils. Well, there we go. This looks pretty darn good, doesn't it? Welcome to Horas Vacion. I got here late yesterday. It's small. There are only a few hotels, four or five restaurants, a few shops, and a small port. Not much more. But I've got a cozy room with a view of the sea, and a few beaches are just steps away. After checking into my hotel yesterday, one of the hosts came to my door. And they said, Mr. Mr. Your bike. Problem. Problem. The wind. The wind. It, it blown your bike over. You must move it. Sure. Yesterday's ride was crazy windy, but blow my bike over? I'm not sure. I think a car hit it on the roundabout where I parked. Now, I've got a problem. Neither my headlight nor my LED running lights work. When I get back to Hanya, I'll have to deal with that. So after a delicious breakfast this morning, I got on this boat. I'm on my way to Lutro. It's a small fishing village that you can only get there by boat. Join me. Alan Carl, World Rider. Not sure how the audio is going to sound. Leaving Spakion, Auto Spakion, uh, heading to Lutro. It's a little village only accessible by boat. I'm not sure what I'm going to find there, but I understand there's a spectacular beach and some tavernas. There's always a taverna. So. We've already passed a several exclusive little beaches, they look like. I mean exclusive, meaning you can clearly only get to them by boat. They've got several water taxis leaving the little town I'm staying in that I imagine you can stop. I'm on a bigger ferry that uh, makes, I think, eight... Well, the ferry service goes to eight different spots. The furthest one being an island called Gavados, which is the southernmost point in Europe uh, on, uh, on an island, obviously. It's pretty close to Africa. Uh, it takes about an hour on the fast boat. If you go on a boat like this, it's about two hours. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to get there on this trip, but I am thinking about it. Anyway, that's the scene here as we head to Lutro. 
south or western creek. Ah, now they've just turned the engines down, so we'll see exactly what's going on here. Maybe we're making a stop. Are we there yet? So I made it. I'm in Lutro. Check this place out. It's a small fishing village in the southwestern part of Crete. Because you can only get here by boat, it appears to be a place lost in time. Sure, you can come here by foot, but it's a treacherous trek through craggy and arid terrain. And this time of year, it's scorching hot. There are no roads in Lutro, so there are no cars. The village was named after nearby baths. The Greek word for baths is Lutro. Now, historians believe this was the ancient city of Phoenix and the port of ancient Annapolis. Now, since Lutro can only be reached by sea, it has escaped gentrification and its environment and culture have not been changed by the rapid growth of tourists. There are no large hotels, no congested streets, and as I said, no cars. Only a few residents live here and tourists come, few of them, to enjoy the sun, the sea, and that freedom of seclusion. Lutro is so small that you can walk from one side to the other in under five minutes. But this is Greece, and there are plenty of tavernas serving traditional Greek and Cretan fare along the way, including one of my personal favorites, roasted goat on the spit. Look at these whitewashed buildings with those blue framed windows and blossoming bougainvilleas. It looks like we could be in Santorini or another village in the Cyclades, but no, we're in Crete, and this is the Libyan Sea. Just check out that color. It's one of the things that makes Lutro so famous. So I'm going to relax, enjoy the peace, and throw myself into that gorgeous water. Man, it sure is hot here, but that dip in the water was just what I needed, as well as this very frosty, cold glass of fresh-squeezed orange juice. Loving Lutro, just loving it. After that boat voyage and swim in Lutro, I'm ready for some tasty Greek food and of course, delicious wine. But before dinner, I wanna take in the calm serenity of the sun setting over the horizon, turning the sky into a beautiful shade of orange and pink. The view of the Libyan Sea is breathtaking, especially those towering cliffs that just seem to tumble down into the water. It's a quiet night in the little village of Horas Vakion. As I stroll along the promenade, I take in the sights and sounds of the town. With only four or five tavernas to choose from, you would think it would be easy to make a decision, but I find myself walking up and down the short promenade, checking everyone out. The sea breeze is refreshing, and the waves gently splashing on the shore are soothing. There are plenty of seats at the tavernas, and the smell of grilled seafood and meats fills the air. I finally settle on a cozy taverna that catches my eye. The owner greets me with a warm smile and shows me to a table with a perfect view of the sea. The red wine was just a little bit too hot. Certainly not cellar temperature, so I've got it in an ice bucket here. They're very kind. They have special napkins that have a hole in it to go over the top of the bottle. Anyway, we're drinking a uh, red Mandelaro Cretan red grape. It's kind of a medium bodied, perfect for this dish that I'm having right here. Okay? You know what that is? Something we don't eat in the US, hardly any goat. This is roasted goat, hours in the oven. And it's apropos because, you know, we love goat cheese, of course. But. You know, the U.S. goat seems kind of exotic. But here in Spakia, which is the region I'm in, and I'm in the town of Poro Spakion, as I rode here over two mountain ranges and through a valley, lots of goats running across the road. So in this part, although I've been having such great seafood here in Greece and in Crete, tonight they had goat on the menu. That's what we're doing, and uh, tomorrow night, since I'm on the sea, we'll definitely do the seafood. 
but it's going great with this Mandelaro uh, Cretan varietal wine from the Idea Winery. It's a good idea. Brilliant red wine. Wow. And these are Svakian potatoes. Mm. But let me tell you, this goat Lean, full of flavor, roasted in its own juices. We gotta do more goat in the US. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Cheers from Creep. World Rider Alan Carl checking in, of course. Love you guys. Keep with us. We're doing this journey. 2022. It's been so long. Okay, Alan Carl, World Rider checking in. A little bit of Cretan, Greek, Balkans, Eastern Europe culture here. I've just had an incredible meal. Started out with a Greek salad. I did a little bit of a kind of a fava bean dip with the, the bread, which was with onions and some cherry tomatoes. Really good. Uh, then I had the slow roasted goat in the oven. Incredible. Hours and hours. So tender, so lean. But it's tradition in, um, in these parts of the world that at the end of the meal, and often, at least I'm hearing in Crete, during every part of the day is to drink Rocky. Now, in mainland Greece they call it Chipero. In the Balkans they call it Rakia or sometimes Rakia. Uh, all the way to Georgia they call it Chacha. In Italy they call it Grappa. But it's pretty strong shit. That's all I'm going to tell you. But like all, you got to respect the culture and you know drink it but don't drink too much definitely don't drink too much this is crete and therefore it's rocky it's at the end of the meal they just sliced me up some nice watermelon we are drinking rocky and we are happy that we are in a remote village which is the best part of crete is to get out of those major cities like hania and Herkleon and uh Arios, uh, Nicholas, and etc. Get to a place like this. Hora Savakion. Cheers. Here is Rocky. Here's Greece. Crete. Alright, another day on the road. Yep. I've got Doc all up good my lovely Ortlieb duffels got everything ready to go so I'm gonna have to do it Hi. bye bye I gotta compress these bags a little bit down more but ah later okay Set the GPS. Where are we going? Hanya. Of course. Back to that Venetian port. These guys are checking out the bike. They're from Germany. Saw them the other day. They were asking about it. All right. Here we go. So I've set the Osmo action facing behind now so you can see what, what I'm leaving behind. So on this ride up these crazy switchbacks, I'm going to give you the front point of view view and I'm going to give you the back point of view view. And we're going to just check out what this place looks like leaving the Libyan Sea and heading back to the Mediterranean. The road's in good shape. It doesn't, it doesn't appear to be as windy as the other day when I came in, but it's still pushing me around a little bit. I don't know how the audio sounds. But look at this. I just love it. I just love arriving, and I love leaving. I guess I just love being on that bike. As much as this vertigo kind of throws me off, I seem to be doing okay. This 
especially on these crazy switchbacks. I'm going to stop here and uh, kind of sort through some things. Get this. Let me show you the view of the sea. Wow. All right, I'm just walking over here to get a view. You know, the cool thing about these gloves is they actually work pretty good on the touch screen on the iPhone. Anyway, I just got to readjust the microphone, fix the cameras a bit, kind of sort through the technology stuff. You know how it is. Anyway, get these gloves back on and let me take you up the road a bit and we'll get over to Hanya and see that beautiful Venetian port. God, I just knocked the microphone off while adjusting my face shield, but gotta be careful of that. I think I'm gonna need to put a tether on that microphone. I don't wanna lose it. Yesterday I lost my windscreen for the Osmo Pocket. Here we go. We are leaving Slovakia. It's about one in the afternoon on Wednesday. And I was in Hora Svakion, which is a little village here on the Libyan Sea, the southwestern part of Crete. It's the whole region is Spakia, so there are a lot of little towns that, it, I don't know, it's, it's not a prefecture, I, I don't understand exactly how. You know, it's like a county, I guess, or something like this. Two nights here, it was beautiful. The landscapes is rugged, arid. We had some pretty big winds happening Sunday when I arrived. Look at that. After I unloaded my motorcycle, I went to find a parking space. So I, there's a little roundabout right there before you come into the, what would be the, you know, pretty much not uh, the, the pedestrian promenade, although, you know, locals to make deliveries can drive their vehicles down there, but, you know, not me and my motorcycle. So I park it there, put the cover on it, take everything up to my room, kind of get settled, ready to enjoy the evening, and they come up and say, hey, a big gust of wind knocked your motorcycle over. And sure enough, I go over to my motorcycle and it's on its side. And I'm like, how's that possible? I mean, that hasn't happened since I was in El Chalten in Patagonia, Argentina, many years ago. Those winds down there, I was out on hiking on Fitzroy. Look at this, Wee! Any vertigos? Anybody up for a vertigo? I love how lighting is perfect right now that it lights up these rocks. travel bus, so maybe somebody's doing a little hike, I don't know. Yeah. How about that? So anyway, the bike falls over. I pick it up with some help. Mirror got knocked a bit. My little holder, my rock form holder was moved for the phone. And my uh, arrow stitch feather light motorcycle cover took a little bit of a hit when it hit the rocks on the ground, so there's a couple holes in it now. That was a new cover, just in 2019, I think. So. So it's an hour and a half ride to Hania. I am staying at the Porto Viziano Hotel. I met a, an Irish guy from Dublin last night. He used to be a heavy metal guitar player. He's retired now because of COVID. He couldn't tour. He's thinking about buying some place in Greece. He's been coming here to Slovakia for years. He kind of barged into a conversation I was having with uh, these French people who live just on the, in the Basque side of Spain. He comes over, he says, I heard you talking about wine, I might be able to help you out. Well, it turns out he helped me out drinking the wine, but not really. <laughs> yeah, no, nice enough guy. He was drinking Retsina. He really had an affinity to it. And I'm like, well, that, that Retsina is not even from Crete. I mean, if you're gonna drink a Retsina, find one from Crete. But the Retsina is uh, a very interesting Greek wine. Like port back in the day, they used sap of the tree to help preserve it. Okay, here's my first tunnel. This is the Imbros Gorge. There's a little cafe right out there.
got to loop the chain. Just realize that the, uh, the this little thing I have right here for looping the chain automatically. Um, uh, oh, there's a goat. There's a goat. Some goats. Hey, goats. It's, it's nap time for the goats. I ate one of you guys the other night. Oh, look at all these goats. Okay, here it's windy. Will my bike get blown over? It's a good question. Uh, hey, greetings. Uh, it's, it's really windy up here, so I apologize for that. Uh, I've stopped over here to take a look at the, um, the end of the Imbros Gorge, but I wanted to introduce you a few of my friends here. Um, hey guys! Hey wait! Come here! Hey, come here! I didn't mean to interrupt you during your nap! Well, I didn't want to interrupt them during the nap, but uh, okay, we better get going. Okay, after playing with some goats, switching the cameras around, now we're, uh, we're keeping and mixing it up. Oh. Okay, we've got another hour and eight minutes. Let's go, no cars, no cars. It's too windy to fly the drone. But we've got 14 miles or more switchbacks. So we're going to cross through a valley and then up and over another mountain. And then we're on the main road into Pontiac, the biggest city on this side of the island. It doesn't seem as hot today, but the sun is definitely baking down. We've got the jacket opened up so just to let the air in. I'm not wearing the riding pants. It's just a little bit too hot for that. Not something I normally do. I'd like to wear all the gear all the time. I'm not really going that fast or far, so it's an hour and a half ride today. I make uh, an exception to the Allen rule. There's also this whole notion of the vendetta that is an historical Creek thing that they basically, if, if you cross somebody, you get marked with a vendetta and then you are set to be killed. And a lot of Creek people, for fear of their families getting killed, the vendettas last for generations, that the vendetta, they, they flew to the Mani, to the Peloponnese in mainland Greece, where they built these houses of stone and massive towers so they could see if the Cretans would be coming after them by boat. I need to learn a little more about the vendetta, but that's my a basic understanding and, and also a little bit of background on these stone towers I found while traveling the Mani Peninsula in the Peloponnese mainland Greece. Some of you who may be Greece watching this video certainly add to the comments below and let us know what you know about the Vendetta or about the gun culture here in Crete. And if you're a wine fan, let us know about that Cretan wine. And please don't forget to subscribe because I like bringing these these videos to you from all over the world, currently in Crete. Great ride. That road. Nice little slow banker into another one. Look ahead of us. We are seeing the other side of the Mediterranean.
More goats! We are in Crete, the land of the goat. So while we get into the whole food discussion, you know, I did have that goat, it was delicious in the oven. Um, three brothers owned this one restaurant, and um, the one guy who did the most of the serving, his name was Yanni as well, but it was a bit of a Greekified Albanian name. Yes, that's right, he was from Albania. So we had a whole discussion, because I've been all over Albania, and had a wonderful time. Now look at the distance. Look at that. So Hania is on the other side of that little... Well, actually, no, that's the right there. You can see where the big boat is going in. That is the Newport where I got... I took my ferry to. So it's a little outside the center of town. So on the other side of that is the old port, the Venetian port. But this morning when I was back in, packing up my bike at my hotel, I had had breakfast, I had some eggs and uh, uh, some bacon, some bread. And one of the servers looks at the bike and he sees all the flags on the panniers. He says, all the countries you go to? And I said, yeah, I've been to those. He starts looking around it and then finally he says, oh, my country. And he points to the flag of Albania. So there you go, there's another Albanian. So the Greeks hire a lot of Albanians. The Albanians find they can make more money here than in their country. Um, and the tourist culture here is obviously much, much, much bigger than in Albania. I mean, uh, if you're watching this video, uh, uh, is Albania on your bucket list? I hate that word, bucket list, by the way. But is it on your top five places you might want to visit? Maybe it should be, for that reason, that it's not on a lot of people's lists. Sometimes going somewhere where people aren't, your experiences can open up, be much more rich. My tank bag is open. Let's just pull over here and let me zip up my tank bag, make sure I haven't, I haven't lost anything. Everything looks intact. You know, we're not going crazy. No, but here, let's zip that up. Yeah, so Albania. So these guys, so friendly, and you know, they're working hard. They're hard workers, really hard work. Anyway, it's, it's always fun connecting with people. And it's nice to see this kid's face light up when he saw the Albanian flag on my motorcycle. Wonderful. Let's get another view of the Mediterranean. Now we're on the, heading to the northern side of Crete. How about that? How about that? And how about we just uh, wind this video down here? I got about 30, 40 minutes to get to Anya. We'll pick that up in the next episode. Make sure you don't miss that. Subscribe here to my channel, World Rider TV. I look forward to more adventures on Crete, and we're going to take you to Albania as well. Tune in. Here we are, back in Hanya.